Alrighty, party peoples of the interwebs, as fate would have it, the clinching point of the 2024 election might be the moment Hochul's commie state of New York decided to murder a man's pet squirrel and raccoon. <laughs> Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler in my home office. It is Sunday, so get ready for the Sunday night Viva and Barnes law extravaganza at 6 o'clock Eastern. Pay attention to daylight savings because daylight savings time has changed. I forget which way it went. Spring ahead, fall back. Check your clocks, people. 6 o'clock tonight. But as I'm sure you've heard the story because I put out a vlog yesterday and I think pretty much everybody's talking about it. In New York State, Hochul's commie state of New York where we have seen lawfare and violation of constitutional rights from Dexter Taylor, who's in jail now for 10 years for building his own firearms in the privacy of his own apartment, to Donald Trump's lawfare, where he was sentenced to $450 million in damages, found liable for sexual abuse under a ridiculous law. They literally changed the law yet again to facilitate a batshit crazy E. Jean Carroll suing Donald Trump. And just the other day, we saw the administrative state run amok where they went and seized the pet squirrel and raccoon of a man and woman named Mark and Danny Longo. The Instagram page for the squirrel, Peanut the squirrel had over a million followers, an animal that did nothing but bring joy and happiness to the people, and apparently that's enough for summary execution by the administrative state. Now, people on the internet are saying, Viva, you're making too big a deal of this. What's the big deal? This is like Harambe for the right, and I'm like, if you think this is Harambe for the right, A, you're an idiot, and B, Harambe shouldn't have been killed either. But there is a world of difference between killing a zoo animal because a child, apparently not being properly supervised by the parents, falls into the enclosure of the animal. Harambe should not have been killed either, but there's a world of difference between killing a zoo animal and the authorities knocking down your door, kicking you out of your own home so they can treat you like a criminal, going through all of your private property, then seizing your private pets and murdering them. As at the time of shooting this vlog, Mark Longo took to Twitter to say that he is meeting with Donald Trump to discuss this issue because Donald Trump is kind of paying attention to the things that matter to the people and the privacy and sanctity of their own home from an administrative state, a commie administrative state, is kind of first and foremost on the list of priorities of most Americans. Mark Longo at Mark Longo ONX. We're going to meet at Real Donald Trump soon. Thank you for the continued support. Spread the word. Justice for Peanut. Justice for Fred. Your government murdered us in an AI-generated meme. I've said it before. I'll say it again. There can be nothing more representative, emblematic of what a Kamala Harris, Tim Walls administration would be than the government knocking down your door and murdering your pets. And it's right for Donald Trump to seize on this issue to make people understand this is what your future would probably look like under a Harris-Walls regime. So so Godspeed, justice for Peanut, and justice for Fred, and may the world understand that the government is not your friend. The government should not be empowered to, on anonymous complaints, go to courts, get secret warrants to come and seize your private property, seize your beloved pets, and put them to death. But it is emblematic of what a Harris-Walls regime would be, a regime under which they would want to criminalize misinformation and disinformation when they are the biggest purveyors of misinformation and disinformation. It's literally impossible for Kamala Harris to open her mouth and say anything other than an outright lie. She is a liar. She is a DEI hire. She is a woman who slept her way to the top of her career. And this is not a question of slut shaming anybody. This is just a question of understanding how someone so utterly incompetent could be one breath away from the White House. And it's not just that she's incompetent. It's not just that she's a liar. She is the worst candidate that has ever been run for any political party anywhere. She is nothing but a mirage. She is nothing but a manufactured entity of the media. She has no skills, no personality that anyone likes at the very least. And she is a manufactured construct of the media, of the machine, of the apparatus, that people are being brainwashed into thinking is a potential candidate. At the end of the day, it doesn't even matter who the Democrats run. They could run a dog, and 40% of Democrats will vote for that dog, so long as they don't know it's a dog. I suspect some of them would even vote for it if they knew it was a dog. But the bottom line is, Kamala Harris is a terrible, hated candidate. And but for the media apparatus around her, she would have been the same detested candidate she was in 2020. So anybody voting for her, congratulations, you are an idiot susceptible of brainwashing. And if it weren't for the media, Kamala Harris would be nowhere in the polls. It is all manufactured to the point where, my goodness, they need to cheat, they need to lie, they need to literally steal in order for her to have a chance. Because don't forget, she stole $100 million in campaign donations that were donated to Joe Biden while she was out there lying through her teeth, saying Joe's good for another four years. Donate to him. Ha ha. Stab him in the back. Take his $100 million that was donated to his campaign. Cheat, lie, steal. It's the only way they can even be remotely competitive. And if you needed another example, my goodness, did you see what happened on Saturday Night Live last night? I didn't 
didn't see it either because nobody watches that stinking hellhole of a show. But my goodness, what did they do yesterday? They ran a skit. Which is nothing more than a disguised campaign ad. I'm not going to play any portion of that because in addition to being unfunny propagandist rubbish, they are also copyright trolls of the highest order. You show five seconds of a skit from SNL, you are going to get copy claimed. But they ran a skit in which Kamala Harris's image in a mirror is talking to her image in a mirror, except on the other side, it's not Maya Rudolph who plays Kamala Harris. It's Kamala Harris. Oh my goodness, it's so hilariously unfunny. It makes you want to puke when you watch it. But it's not just that it's unfunny. It's also a direct copy of what Donald Trump did. I think it was back in 2016. Well, it might have been 2020. I don't remember if it was 2016 or 2020. But the bottom line, it's a direct ripoff of what Donald Trump did on SNL. Lie, cheat, steal, do whatever they can to break the rules in order to gain any form of competitive advantage because their ideas on their own are so disgusting. Nobody would possibly buy into their ideas but for the cheating, lying, and stealing. And it's such a level of lying, cheating, and stealing that even one of the chair people on the FCC said this is an FCC violation. As you may or may not know, under FCC rules, you are required to give equal airtime to political candidates in the time of an election. And lo and behold, SNL, by way of this skit campaign contribution, campaign ad, found a way to circumvent the rules of the FCC. The equal time rule, 47 United States Code Section 315, Candidates for Public Office, specifies that American radio and television broadcast stations must provide equivalent access to competing political candidates. Oh, but we weren't giving airtime to a political candidate. It was just a skit on Saturday Night Live on the last Saturday before the election. Bullshit! From the New York Post, politics, FCC Commissioner Blas Harris's SNL appearance as, quote, clear and blatant effort, end quote, to evade equal time rule. The senior Republican commissioner on the Federal Communications Commission blasted Vice President Kamala Harris's, quote, Saturday Night Live, end quote, debut as a, quote, clear and blatant effort, end quote, to evade the equal time rule. Brendan Carr stressed that the FCC's, quote, equal time, end quote, requirements mandate opposing candidates to get the same airtime and allege that NBC, quote, structured this appearance in a way that evades these requirements, end quote, by timing it so close to election day. And then to read his tweet on the subject, Brendan Carr at Brendan Carr FCC. This is a clear and blatant effort to evade the FCC's equal time rule. The purpose of the rule is to avoid exactly this type of biased and partisan conduct. A licensed broadcaster using the public airways to exert its influence for one candidate on the eve of an election, unless the broadcaster offered equal time to other qualifying campaigns. And based on a statement from the Trump campaign, they did not make such an offer to Donald Trump's campaign. Quote, Kamala Harris has nothing substantive to offer the American people, so that's why she's living out her warped fantasy, cosplaying with her elitist friends on Saturday Night Leftists as her campaign spirals down the drain into obscurity, end quote. Spokesman Stephen Chong said in a statement, quote, for the last four years, Kamala's destructive policies have led to untold misery and hurt for all Americans. She broke it and President Trump will fix it, end quote. Kamala Harris copied Donald Trump's policies on no tax on tips. She copied Donald Trump's policies on the wall, which she once called a medieval vanity project. And now she's copying Donald Trump's appearance on Saturday Night Live to circumvent FCC rules to get one last attempt to brainwash some people into voting for her. When Democrats aren't lying, cheating, stealing in order to steal elections, they are out there busting down your front door to kill your pets. This is a turning point. This is an inflection point. You have now two days to decide what future you are going to vote for. Do you want a Kamala Harris, Tim Walls future where they criminalize disinformation and misinformation and will surely one day be locking you up like they're locking people up in the UK where they can bust down your front door to make sure that you're storing your firearms safely and where they bust down your front door, kidnap your pets, and then murder them. Donald Trump may not be able to fix everything, but one thing is sure as sugar, it was Kamala Harris and Joe Biden who spent the last three and a half years breaking it. So vote accordingly come Tuesday and justice for Peanut and Fred. And with that said, if you like what I do, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, make sure your notifications are turned on. I will see you all in a matter of minutes now. And most importantly, exercise, eat healthy sunlight, talk to people in real life. And now you know your vlog. Peace out, peeps. Booyah! But what didn't that deal also involve amnesty? And didn't that deal also involve a significant did, number yeah. of illegal yeah. aliens being allowed into the country every year? I think it was two million people. Uh, well, so yeah. it was still the same sort of situation. And their fear is exactly what I talked about, that these people will be moved to swing states and that that will be used to essentially rig those states and turn them blue forever. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure if that's that's uh, what, 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 what's what's in play. I, I think it's really like it's important that we have to have an, an honest conversation. But about doesn't that seem logical though? If you have a significant number of people that are being moved into swing states that have come across the border illegally, and then you've provided them with all these services, you provided them with food stamps, EBT, you've provided them with housing. You could, if you gave those people amnesty and allowed those people to vote, and it was very organized. 
You're talking about 75,000 votes over a few counties that switched everything over to the Republicans. You could see how you import 10 million people over the course of four years illegally and then move a significant number of them to swing states and then provide them with all these services and then give them a path to citizenship you could uh, essentially rig those states. Uh, undeniably, immigration is changing our nation. I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time in Texas, but it's very clear that, that immigration has, has remade Texas.